Welcome to Tom Talks. Join me once a week right here on Tom Bully YouTube channel. We're gonna break down all the latest and greatest walleye fishing tips, walleye fishing tricks, the absolute location where these fish are right now, and all the practical, relevant information you want and need. Hooked off. And look at that, just gone. For all the information you want and need, stay tuned right here, once a week, Tom Talks. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. You can call it a Tom Talks, you can call this whatever you want, but it's gonna be incredibly informational and a ton of good practical early ice content. And one question which we have been getting asked a ton, which is how do you find first ice or early winter walleyes? And how do you pick those locations? Which is generally, or uh, which is definitely what we're gonna dive into the deepest on this little video here. Um, but first I wanna ask you guys to subscribe to this video. It helps me out a lot and hopefully this channel helps you guys out a lot. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the ice content. We are finally back on the ice. It took about a, probably a week and a half off and uh, I'm glad I did because the amount of time it took me just to swap gear out, like rods to in the boat and you know clean the boat and all that kind of stuff just took way longer than I thought it was going to. But And it's also been just unseasonably warm this year, right? And uh, I remember last year I was on ice on November 8th and I was in a boat on November 7th. And uh, you know, this year here we are in December and I'm still like just kind of trying to sort of get out um, on some smaller northern Wisconsin lakes. Obviously we've been up to northern Minnesota a few times, um, but yeah, the ice is just unseasonably warm. Not a whole lot of really cold stuff, but it is on the way. It is winter, so you can rest assured it will get cold at some point here. But uh, you know, one question we get asked a ton is where do you go to find early season ice walleyes? And we haven't been talking about this a lot. And the reason for that is you're, we're basically fishing on foot. Um, you know, with the exception of some places in the far north, um, you know, ice is a lot of that, you know, zero to four inches right now. And, uh, you know, we're not taking machines out on a lot of that stuff. So there's not like a whole lot of, um, you know, bounce around to like 20 different spots in a day type fishing right now, right? And, uh, you know, we'll definitely be doing a lot of that once we're on the snowmobiles and stuff out on the ice here in the next probably, hopefully, couple of weeks um, in Minnesota. Uh, but yeah, so you know that's one huge question we ask. So where do you go to find first ice walleyes? And this definitely changes throughout the course of the winter. Now, ice fishing is a little bit goofy um, and a little bit simple for you know kind of two contradicting reasons. One, you know the water stays the same for a very long period of time, which I generally associate to a good bite because it. Um, um, you know that when that water sets up and is very similar for a very long period of time generally fish settle into a long pattern But there's definitely a different pattern that happens Let's say early in the winter versus middle of winter and then at the end of winter And if you ice fish for walleyes in like Wisconsin and Minnesota um, You know our season closes in that mid-February to the end of February time frame um, Why aren't we allowed to have a catch and release season from there till our regular fishing opener? I don't know that's a great question because you can on you know, most of the best lakes on the planet, right? Um, but uh, yeah, you know, so we don't get to fish that very late winter period um, like you might if you are on a Great Lake, like you might if you are on like the Mississippi River type of a thing, but normally that's already in a boat, or like you would if you were on like Winnipeg or something like that. So we don't get that end of winter fish are moving to spawn ice fishing gap. Um, but we're gonna talk about, you know, first ice for right now. You know, where are those first ice walleye locations? And I got a map pulled up here. I think I gotta turn this camera on. If the camera even has battery. Okay, yeah, the camera has battery. So um, we're looking at a lake map right now. And uh, hopefully you guys can see it all right. But you can see, you know, a lot of base. And you guys know how much I like um, doing depth highlighting features, right? So I'm kind of scrolling around here and you can see a lot of this stuff. But, um, you know, one early ice walleye location that we focus on a ton, and if you watch a lot of our fall videos, you saw us fishing it, is weed line fishing, right? Fishing the weed edge for walleyes. And then they love being on those weed edges very late in the year. It's generally a post turnover thing. The lake will turn over and a lot of those fish and a lot of that small bait fish life will move back into shallow weeds. So the first thing we can do is we can highlight um, the, the depth in which those weeds are, right? And a lot of lakes, like I might start, let's say you have a 10 foot weed edge, which is what we're gonna go with on this lake. Let's say you have a 10 foot weed edge, right? I'm gonna set my shallow water highlight to 10. So I'm gonna go menu, menu, and I'm gonna come down shallow water highlight. I'm gonna turn this to 10. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna highlight everything in red that is 10 feet and less, right? So right away when we start scrolling around, we get a, a bigger, a better idea where some of these shallow flats are, shallow humps like this, um, you know, things of this nature here. And a lot of times fish like sitting on the actual weed edge, right? 
So what does that mean? Um, you know, does that mean that fish are on the inside edge, outside edge? What does that really mean? Well, in a lake that has a 10 foot weed edge, a lot of times you're talking about fish being in depths of let's say eight feet. If there's a seam in those weeds and they might be up on the, you know, kind of in the, a bald spot in that weed edge, or they might be on the outside edge. And by that outside edge, normally I'm looking for flat sections of water outside of that weed edge. So I want to be looking at from depths of basically, let's say 10 to 15 now, because that's kind of going to be that flat section outside of this weed edge. It's going to help us really dial in a lot of these spots where these fish are going to have a better likelihood of holding. So I'm going to go menu, menu. I'm going to scroll down to my mid depth highlight here. I'm going to put my minimum on 10 and my maximum on 15 here. So now what that's going to do, it's going to highlight everything in green that is between 10 and 15 feet. And now what I'm going to be seeing better is these flat sections just outside of weed edges. So you can see like right here, very large, very flat um, shelf and then a very tight break off of that. So you can imagine this spot's going to be like, you know, weed edge right here, boom, 20 feet. Now there's not a lot of room on that break line for fish to really hold. Might they run up and down it? Absolutely. Is it a holding spot? Not really. The kind of spots which I am going to be looking for is something that looks a lot more than something like this right here, right? So what we have here is this big long shallow flat and a wider break and it actually saddles in and comes up onto something else you can see, which is another good point to make. You know, here's a point in this shelf, saddles down, comes up on this. And a lot of times these saddles or these interconnected stuff are just natural travel, travel corridors for fish, right? Does the fish swim across the basin like this and ends up on this point? Or does he come down this like this, right? And ends up sitting on this point. So that's kind of another way you can look at it. But you know, early season, these are the kind of spots we're focusing on right here. So I'll kind of drop a waypoint. You know, this would be an area in which I would be interested in, right? A flat section just outside of a weed edge. So if we kind of keep scrolling around here, let's see what else we got. Very steep break, very uninteresting right there. Here's kind of a little inside swing. This would be the kind of deal right here. And what you can see is this is very basin related, right? A lot of open, deep water around this kind of stuff, right? And uh, you know, it's, like, it's, you know, it's like 49 feet over here. And this is definitely a good complex looking area. Here we have two of these spots, right? A very nice flat section of water right here. You know, this whole kind of hump complex is looking pretty good. And this is the kind of spot where you can you know, jig definitely a little bit bigger hump you could run some set lines around it and stuff like that coming down to here here we have another one you know it, it, once you get good at looking at this kind of stuff it becomes pretty obvious right and this is a lot of the you know what we're doing when we're looking for these weed line relating fish here's a kind of another one over here another edge you can see I'm kind of bypassing a lot of like this kind of stuff which I'm not very interested in right and a lot of times what you'll see on these areas where there's a flat section outside of a weed edge like let's say your weed edge ends in like you know like we said 10 feet of water well you're not getting there might be like a fringy you know like a, a much less thick much shorter weed that is outside of that 10 foot range but you don't see it on spots that look like this right here you might hit that you know that, that thick cabbage edge at like eight nine ten feet right here where you have weeds that are very tall and as this thing just slowly drops off what you might see is some fringy weed just outside of that 10 foot depth zone in that 11 12 feet right and those are the kind of spots where really walleyes really like to hold on the outside of that kind of stuff you know weeds are much more likely to grow on these flat sections of water versus these very steep and hard breaking you know a lot of times that break line is just too hard to really get a lot of good weed life right so these are kind of the areas right here, which I'm looking for. And this weed edge bite is always one of the best ones early in this early ice time frame, right? And uh, you know, there's a ton of fish there in the fall. As the winter progresses, what you see is generally a few less fish in these areas and um, the fish having a higher tendency to use these areas late in the day, right? A lot of these fish might go move around in deeper water and then move up on this stuff later in the day. But a lot of guys have this misconception that, you know, the walleye bite in the shallows is not good during the day. And that is just not the case at all early in the season, right? These fish are living up here. It's generally one of the better, especially like a good tip up bite um, or a good shallow jig bite. These things are absolutely the best right now until gen generally like that mid-January, early January period, right? And first ice is obviously a great time to come out and do this kind of stuff. And you guys will see us doing a whole bunch of this kind of fishing um, in the future, right? So that's kind of spot number one is a lot of these, you know, weed edge oriented spots. And you know, a lot of lakes, it might differ. Um, you know, let's say you have like a five foot weed edge, right? 
in a lot of your shallow stain systems. And a lot of times what I'm, no, same thing, I'm same thing I'm looking for there. Very big spots, right? Very large type of spots, generally surrounded by basin. And a lot of your shallow stain flow systems, this might be a huge shallow water bay with a ton of weeds, and then that edge where it kind of meets that deeper water, right? And those are a lot of times those areas I'm looking for in lakes that have a much shallower weed edge. But the same thing applies. You're looking for flat sections outside of weed edges or on weed edges, and you're looking for very big spots that are generally basin oriented or have deep water close to them. All right, the second kind of spot we're always looking for first ice. Um, and a lot of this stuff relates to, you know, fish relate the same to a piece of structure, whether it's July or, you know, May or January or February, how fish relate to a spot doesn't really change. The spots they're using throughout the season will obviously change. Uh, but spot number two we're, we're looking at, and I say a lot in the open water videos, Fish will always relate to shallower water um, when there is weeds around, right? Um, and uh, that is definitely true. You know, if you have, a lot of times in the summer, you'll have like a split type of bite. You might have a bite that's going on in a eight foot weed edge, and then you might have a bite that's going on on a 17 foot rock edge, right? Or a rock hump or something like that. And that's the other kind of spot we're looking for, is a lot of these mid depth, I'll call them, rock structures, right? And later in the winter, a lot of times what we start getting into is fishing a lot of these much deeper rock structures, right? But in this early winter time frame, these, this kind of mid-depth stuff, and I kind of relate it a lot to like, think about the types of rock humps you're, you're doing a lot, of, a lot of slip bobbering or a lot of snap jigging on in like that late May into like uh, late June time frame, right? I kind of call it like these early summer type, uh, I always call them slip bobber humps because we do so much slip bobbering on these kind of locations. And a lot of times this is gonna be like your 12 to 20 foot depth range, right? So I'm gonna go back to my menu menu here and I'm gonna go to these kind of, um, what did I say, 12 to 20, that's pretty good average there. We'll put coal this up to 20. So now what I'm gonna do is highlight everything in green that is 12 to 20 feet of water. And you can see there's quite a bit of green popping out. And, you know, we just kind of looked at some of these weed points right here. So it's not really a vastly different depth range, but it is a little bit deeper, right? And a lot of times these are some of my favorite spots to jig fish because you get fish that are just unbelievably ramped up in this early ice time frame, And they're in a little bit shallower water than they're gonna be in the rest of the year. And a lot of times when they hit these rock humps, they're just incredibly like energized, right? And uh, we'll kind of start scrolling around here and looking for them. And a lot of times what you might be looking at is some of these spots like this, which are extensions from other spots, um, but they have like a finger that looks something like this right here. So, you know, we can move along and if that is rock, you know, that's gonna be a good one to hit or we'll kind of keep scrolling around here, see what else we got. I'm not even really sure how many spots there are like this on this lake. Here's an isolated main lake hump, right? Perfect. This one might even have weeds on top, who knows? But a lot of times when you see humps that are shaped like this, when they're long and skinny, there's a very high likelihood that there's gonna be um, some kind of very hard bottom stuff, whether that's rock or gravel on these kind of tips right here, right? And you can see how much base in this thing is surrounded by. So, you know, these are definitely kind of the key points to kind of look at here. And you can see we got a lot of basin around it. And this is very key for these kind of spots because one thing you'll see a lot when you're fishing rock, and uh, this goes for no matter what time of year, is that rock hump might not have a single fish on it for several hours. And then a lot of times what you'll have is a, a school of fish moving out of the basin and, and move up onto that rock hump. And it's just like fish are rampantly biting, right? It's just a very aggressive thing. Normally when fish are on rock um, and they hit that and they come off a basin into rock, they're very, very aggressive, right? And they might only sit there for an hour or a couple hours. Um, a lot of times that, you know, rock is notorious for having that very strong morning and evening bite window, right? And that kind of goes for a lot of different lakes you fish and especially a lot of your clear systems you're gonna fish in the winter, right? But spots like this, spots like this, definitely key spots to look at. And you know, it only takes a second to like drop the camera down, drop the Markham down and you know, see what's down there as far as that's rock or you know, what you got going on there. And the other beauty of fishing rock is a lot of times you're not gonna mark anything but walleyes, right? You might mark a small up there, there might occasionally be something else there, but 99% of the time, if you're dropping that flasher down and you're seeing fish interacting with your jig, um, it's a very good sign that you are on walleyes, right? And we'll kind of keep scrolling around here, see if we can find something else. Here's another one of these kind of areas right here, for sure. And uh, you can see it's kind of got a little bit going on. We got a point here, we got a hump here, we got a hump here. And uh, you know you can like drop a waypoint on that, 
that one doesn't look quite as good to me as like this one here because it's around so much deep water. And uh, these are the kind of spots I'm looking for, these kind of mid-depth rock areas, right? And I love to move around. I do a ton of moving around on the ice, spot to spot to spot to spot. And um, you know, a lot of days we might go back and forth between several different spots for early, early ice, right? We might start out in the morning, you know, as the sun's coming up on some of these mid-depth rock humps to kind of capitalize on some of these fish that are moving around a little bit more in the, in the early morning and evening and are very aggressive. And then, uh, you know, towards the middle of the day, that sun's up high, we might go into a weed edge. We might throw out some tip-ups and do some jigging in that weed edge because a lot of times weeds hold fish all day long where rocks might be a little bit more hit and miss. And then in the evening, we might go back to jigging some of these mid-depth rock humps, right, to kind of capitalize on that again. So you can kind of see how a lot of this stuff kind of, you know, plays into it, each other and how moving around is obviously going to help you catch more fish. But this is definitely kind of the second type of spot in which I'm looking for a lot in this early ice time frame. Now, how does this vary from like, let's say, you know, your late winter spots? Um, we'll definitely do a lot of more of this as the winter goes on, but just kind of to give you guys kind of the natural progression. A lot of times you have fish moving into deeper water later in the winter, right? In this midwinter, winter, you know, the dead of winter time frame, right? Like that end of January to like, you know, late February type of stuff, right? And a lot of times what we end up looking for then is deeper structures. So we'll go even deeper here. And uh, depth is all relative. If you have a lake that gets 30 feet, you know, your shallow water weed edge might be eight feet. Um, your mid depth structure might be 10 to 13 feet and your mid winter depth might be 20 to 30 feet, right? So we're gonna kind of scroll this, like let's say we're gonna put it at 20 to 30 here. Let's go 22 to 30 kind of refine it a little bit more. Now, what I'm looking for now is interconnecting saddles a lot of times in some of this deeper stuff. So here we kind of have a decent one here. My depth range is a little off to really see this good, but what you can see here is we have interconnected structure, right? Right here. And there's kind of some flat on the back side of it. And another thing fish love late in the winter is these mud flat areas in depths they like to hold, right? And by mud flats, I mean soft bottom areas near structure that are kind of in that 27, 28, 29 foot. And what you have is a lot of bug life there. And uh, you know, because of that, you obviously a lot of times will find perch or crappies or bluegills there. And a lot of times midwinter, you'll find walleyes there too. But right where the cursor is here, we have a deep saddle that connects two pieces of structure, right? This would kind of be your perfect midwinter type of area, right? Let's scroll around, see what else we can find here. Some of this deeper stuff when we're set 22 to 30 like this. And uh, here's another one right here. You know, here's a 30 foot hump, I believe, surrounded by basin, 29 foot hump surrounded by basin. A lot of times this is that depth zone that I'm looking a lot for um, in the midwinter, winter doldrums type period, right? Here's another one right here and a real long skinny one. So this one's pretty cool looking. You can almost guarantee this one's gonna be some kind of very hard bottom rock or gravel or something like that because it's real skinny and tight like that, right? And you know, your sweet spot's probably gonna be somewhere out here on this point before it falls out to 43 feet. And uh, we'll throw a waypoint down right there. You know, maybe right up on top of it too, but kind of this whole thing is definitely showing some good characteristics of a midwinter or late winter type of walleye spot, right? Um, so you can see real quick, just looking at the graph, that's a lot of the stuff that I'm looking for, right? Whether it's on a lake I've been to a hundred times, whether it's on a new body of water I've never been to, this is kind of the same process we go through a lot of times, right? And um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely cover a lot more of this late winter type walleye location stuff, kind of as the season progresses. Most of us are obviously, our eyes are on first ice, and uh, you know, it's a great time to catch walleyes. Honestly, it's probably one of the best times of year to be on the ice uh, for walleye fish in this early winter time frame, right? Kind of from now until like that mid-January-ish type of stuff, kind of depending on you know where you're at when your lakes freeze up and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, for this early winter time frame, there's not a lot of moving of fish that goes on really from when I was in a boat, you know, a week and a half ago until you know a, several weeks from now, obviously, right? These fish are very set up in a pro, post turnover locations and they kind of stay there for a while, right? What makes them move for sure? I don't know. Is it oxygen? I don't, I don't even know, but that this is the things that I see happen every single year, kind of no matter what type of body of water I'm on. So hopefully this video is kind of beneficial for you guys. Um, you guys have been asking a lot of questions on first ice walleye locations. This is the stuff I'm looking for. And pretty much all the videos you've seen besides kind of maybe some Northern Minnesota stuff, um, it's, it's a lot of weeds, especially in Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Northern Wisconsin for me, early ice is a lot of times dominated 
um, by shallow weed bites, right? Especially in this early ice period. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. It's about 4.30 in the morning right now. I'm about to load up the truck and uh, go get on some ice and hopefully go catch a bunch of fish today. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content and we'll see you next time.